from Wana Brands. Welcome to Enhance Your Life. I'm your host, Jonathan Small, and each week I talk to people from all sorts of professions and backgrounds about how cannabis has enhanced their lives and how this healing plant can enrich your life too. So hey, everybody, welcome to the Enhance Your Life podcast. My name is John Small, and I am your host. And my very special guest today is Dr. Anne Marie Wong. Dr. Wong is a pediatrician specializing in medical marijuana. She received her bachelor's degree at MIT and finished medical school at the University of Miami, completing her internship and residency at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City. I was born at Mount Sinai. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) A native of Miami, she practices at Medverde Medical Marijuana Clinic in that city. Dr. Wong, thank you so much for joining the show today. Thank you for having me on the podcast. So a little backstory, love to know how you went from being a very traditionally trained doctor to working in the the medical marijuana field. So yes, I had already been uh, practicing as a pediatrician in Western medicine for about 18 years. And Florida had legalized medical marijuana in November of 2016. And uh, I was actually, you know, uh, approached by a colleague of mine that I went to medical school with at University of Miami uh, when that legalization occurred. And it was a group actually that wanted to start some medical marijuana clinics. So we went up to Michigan since one of the doctors was already practicing there and had been practicing there for about seven years already in Michigan and spent time um, seeing his practice. And it also turned out that another uh, colleague of ours in Oregon, who had been practicing even for a little bit longer, was already, you know, established. So I I spent time with him, shadowing him, and I became very, very interested in the possibilities of medical marijuana and and how it's practiced. Did you know much about it before this experience? I mean, what was your impression of medical marijuana before going up to Michigan and spending and, and these different places and spending all these time shadowing these doctors? Well, you know, I I had seen some of the documentaries on, uh, you know, children with seizures uh, who had experienced great success, you know, with the treatment of CBD. But other than that, I was very naive to, you know, how medical marijuana worked. And I I really honestly didn't really know much about it at that point. But yeah, I was just, you know, kind of ready for a fresh start and also something new. And when I saw the the great success that people had with using this as a medicine, it really inspired me. What did your other colleagues think when you decided to, is there a sort of a taboo in Western medicine about about medical marijuana? Oh, yes, um, for sure. (laughs) Um, (laughs) At least uh, when I first started, there definitely was, um, you know, there was a little bit of a mixed bag, I have to say. Um, Some doctors were, you know, very open to it and said, oh, yes, you know, I'd be totally interested if I was your age to to start the same thing. And then other doctors were, were, which is kind of the standard response for most Western doctors is, you know, there's not enough proof, there's no research, you know, so there's kind of a mixed bag. But I have to say that as time has kind of progressed, even in these, uh, these past years, a lot of the doctors have kind of come around, mm. uh, even the ones who initially were, you know, asking me, oh, there's no proof. A lot of them actually turned around and began uh, recommending their patients to me whenever they saw uh, results. And then they saw more studies and, and things that have been kind of more out in the mainstream that uh, how medical marijuana can help people. So let's talk about you work with a lot of children, you're, you're a pediatrician, you know, what conditions do you see of children that come in or with their parents, obviously, to your clinic? What what are they treating? So for for me, I guess just because I have had already a quite a large population of children with autism, for me, that seems to be the most common uh, pediatric diagnosis that I see just because I I really get most of my patients through word of mouth and um, other doctor referrals. And uh, so I have a lot of patients who are on the spectrum, who have behavioral um, issues. I also have patients who have cancer, pediatric patients with cancer. I have some adolescents who have severe anxiety, chronic headaches, 
And so that I'd say as well as seizures are are the most common diagnoses for children. And obviously for all those conditions, you've you've seen marijuana, medical marijuana be effective? You know, it's not a 100% guarantee that it's definitely going to work for everybody, but across the spectrum of those diagnoses, I've definitely seen patients benefit from CBD and medical marijuana. So, you know, when I think of back in uh, the patients that I've seen, yes, in seizures, autism, cancer, anxiety, chronic pain, and headaches, I, I have seen benefit across the board for all those diagnoses. Talk to me about autism. You mentioned that a lot of your patients have uh, are on the spectrum. How how can CBD medical marijuana uh, help with with autism? So a lot of our autistic patients also have anxiety, mm. and they get very agitated. They some of them also have hyperactivity, and I I really usually start primarily with CBD first for these patients. Um, And, you know, in research studies uh, that were done in Israel, uh, they were the first to do the research studies for these children. CBD was really shown to be very helpful uh, in this population. Uh, So I'd say that um, for, for these patients, it usually just helps to calm them down, make them less anxious so they you know, they don't get so easily frustrated and agitated. And therefore, they are able to, um, you know, participate better in their therapies that they're undergoing. Quite a few of the patients, uh, even their parents noticed that even within the first week that they started trying to communicate more, even if they were, you know, you know, not verbal or, you know, minimally verbal, and also the speech therapists have noticed that they did uh, do much better in terms of their uh, speech progression. Do you find that the parents who bring their children uh, to your practice are, you know, frustrated with traditional medicine? Like, why do they come and seek out CBD and medical marijuana? Because that is obviously, you know, a lot of people might have a stigma about about that or a fear of, of, of that. But what brings parents to your to your practice? Yes, I, definitely. I'd say that quite a few of the parents have been, they've tried other medications, multiple medications. Uh, you'd be surprised at the list of medicines that some of these children have already mm. been uh, exposed to. And a lot of the prescription medications may have side effects that, you know, the children don't tolerate them or um, it just doesn't work for them. So they are seeking a more natural alternative or just even an alternative that will work for them because, uh, you know, a lot of, I really, every time I, you know, uh, meet some patients, I I really give kudos to the parents for their patience and uh, their hard work with their children. And, you know, because it is, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot on the parents and especially if they've tried so many different things and they're, this may be their last resort that, you know, they've tried other alternatives already that are, you know, the standard uh, treatments. And this is uh, kind of where they, uh, they end up. And then I also have other patients who have been prescribed, but they didn't start the medications yet, but they just are seeking another alternative in their research on what the side effects are of the prescription medications. So I kind of see uh, both sides of that. What would you say parents sort of biggest concern about medical marijuana and their children is? Well, definitely, you know, with with uh, the fact that it is recreational, it is a recreational uh, drug that, you know, most parents are hesitant to give their children marijuana. They don't want to, you know, give their make their children high, you know, so to say. Mm-hmm. And so I'd say that's kind of the biggest, uh, you know, obstacle is that, uh, you know, all these years that, you know, we've been kind of, you know, told that this is a very dangerous drug and all the effects that it can have on the brain. And, uh, you know, people, of course, don't want to do anything harmful to their children. But, you know, I I feel that, you know, with a doctor's guidance, um, and especially since, you know, the parents are the ones giving the medication carefully, adhering to the dosages and the, um, you know, the specific cannabinoids that we're giving, that, you know, they can be extremely helpful and not harmful to the children. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious what you tell them when they express that concern of, you know, will this make my child high? 
Right. So, you know, I mean, there is a possibility of a side effect. Mm -hmm. However, um, you know, I really usually depending on the uh, depending on what's going on, it really varies from child to child when I see them and, and how they, uh, you know, what their issues are. Um, But for the most part, I'd say I really start with CBD, which is non psychoactive. And Maybe later, depending on the child, we might consider THC, which is the psychoactive part of the the plant. But, you know, there are other cannabinoids even before THC that I go to um, before going to THC. So, you know, I just try and reassure them that what we're using, you know, CBD, CBDA, CBN, CBG, um, other, you know, other cannabinoids are not psychoactive. And you're not going to, it's not really going to create that uh, side effect in your children to make them high. And also at the doses that we use, you know, there it's really should not cause that since we do start very low. If we are using THC, you know, at like one milligram and we only gradually increase slowly until we get the balance of something that's being effective for the symptoms without causing a uh, side effect of any intoxication or high. When you, so for somebody listening to this, who's never brought their child to a medical a marijuana doctor, when would, what would you say to that person to alleviate? Well, I guess my question is, when would be a good time for them to see somebody like you? Well, you know, it's so individual. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the person, you know, some people's threshold is that They've had to exhaust all other prescription medications Mm -hmm. in order to say, oh, you know, they throw their hands up and say, okay, this is it. Like, I have to try this. Yeah. Or other parents might be, you know, a little bit more leaning towards more natural roots and being some parents are more afraid of the side effects of standard prescription medication. So some see me right away once they've been prescribed a or even uh, if their neurologist or their uh, primary doctor or pain specialist brought up, you know, a stronger uh, prescription medication to just come to me at that point. So do you it agree? It really varies on yeah. the person and, and when they're ready is, is what I say, because even for adults, um, as well as pediatric uh, patients and their parents, I have a lot of a lot of them that had been either, you know, referred to me or, you know, had known about me for a while, even sometimes a year before they finally felt ready to, to try it themselves. So, um, so they need to feel ready, but what would you like to tell parents listening who maybe don't feel ready, but, but you obviously believe in what you're doing to encourage them to maybe see somebody like you. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I would say that, you know, if your child is not thriving and, the, the parents feel that their child is not at the potential where they could be, that at any point in that process, it would be a good point to see me just because the way that I and other uh, pediatric medical marijuana doctors approach each child is very different. And, you know, the goal, of course, is not for them to get high or intoxicated, but uh, rather to use this medicine just so that it helps their symptoms and allows them to thrive. So it's not about getting high. You know, we also, you know, some people have the misconception that, oh, they're going to be smoking and, you know, but there's so many other routes that people are very surprised to hear that uh, we utilize that are available at the dispensaries here that uh, can be used that are more medical. So, you know, we use, usually we use uh, sublingual drops under the tongue but there's even um, other modes such as uh, little pumps that look like an asthma inhaler, hmm. transdermal patches and, and other things. So parents don't have to feel that their children are going to be smoking weed and, and things like that. Yeah, so they're not coming in and having uh, a bomb. You know, we a little use mini it bomb. in a very careful way to make sure that it's, you know, not it, it, it really isn't used in that way. Can you tell us what the process is like when, when a patient comes in for the first time, the consultation, how, just w- what to expect? Sure. So, um, so yeah, so uh, in, in our office, you know, we really only have one patient in our office at a time. So it's, it's very calm. And uh, we basically just sit down with the parents and the child. I usually spend for pediatric patients, actually, I allot an hour. Right. Just so all the uh, questions can be answered by the parent. 
I do ask that um, if they do have medical records that they bring them, I, I do like to have a full medication list so I can review the medications and make sure that there are no interactions with cannabis or CBD. And um, yeah, we basically kind of sit down for a bit and discuss what's going on with that patient and what symptoms they're having, what the patient uh, and the parent's goals are. And then I kind of then start through the treatment plan. So it depends on the patient. You know, I have some patients who only wish to start with uh, CBD that comes from hemp. And, and for that, they do not need their medical marijuana card in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I discussed the treatment with them. I kind of print out my treatment plan that I put together there right on the spot, depending on, you know, our discussion. And uh, we review that. And if a patient does say, you know what, I, I want to be on the state registry and get my products, CBD or THC or blends of CBD and THC from the dispensary, then I uh, put their information on the um, state registry. And um, we put the pediatric patient and the caregiver um, on the, the registry and help them with their application. So, uh, you know, that gets taken care of. And I will also, I also give a treatment plan as well for that. And then once the patient is started on the treatment, I do encourage my patients to uh, get back in touch with me, even if it means calling me every few days to mm -hmm. uh, get to the right regimen. Since, you know, as I mentioned, we start low and gradually increase. We want to kind of be in touch so that we kind of adjust and work our way to the best regimen. Do you have any interesting case studies for your pediatric patients that you can share with us? I mean, maybe maybe even a success story that you even share with your colleagues who might be skeptical about what you do and about, about medical marijuana? Sure. There, I mean, there's a few. There is one that kind of pops right in my head <laughs> about a, it was actually a baby mm. who was about a year old who came in, who had Bain, Bainbridge Roper syndrome, who what is that? Uh, was very, it's a, it's a genetic disease that sometimes is associated with autism. Mm. And um, this baby also had very self injurious behavior, which was a, a bit alarming when you saw the baby because the baby had bruises all over her oh, face. Wow. And it was, uh, you know, very, you know, a little, a little bit alarming when, when you saw this child, but probably this a, baby had been doing probably alarming for the parents too, who, you know, people oh, see yeah. the child and think, what are the parents doing to the child? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so I started the baby on just uh, a hemp based CBD oil. And just with that alone, um, and with adjustments over the next couple of weeks, the baby had stopped uh, trying to, you know, bang uh, his face and his head into the mm. crib and stopped uh, hitting himself and was able to really calm down uh, quite a bit. So and that and I see that a lot also with my, you know, just the autistic patients that I have that don't have any syndromes that, you know, that a lot of this behavior can calm down the aggressive or self injurious behavior um, calms down a lot. And I've even had another patient who um, their, uh, their therapist, their ABA therapist, you know, they, they usually make graphs of, uh, you know, how many self injurious uh, events occur during the therapy session, and looking at uh, the graphs over I think it was a, a month period, you could see how the number of uh, episodes of that child being violent or self injurious had decreased in paper, you know, just looking at all these, uh, the papers over the, the, the past month, and it was it was very, uh, you know, very good to see that. So, um, uh, well, why do you think that is? I mean, without getting too scientific, what, what do you think it is about marijuana that caused that behavior, that change in behavior? Um, well, you know, it, it does affect uh, pathways within the brain that are calming mm. and also decreases excitatory uh, pathways within the brain as well. So it, it kind of balances it out. And that's what the endocannabinoid system does is that it provides a homeostasis or a balance within our within our bodies and our brain. I mean, we have receptors uh, throughout our bodies and especially in the brain and in relation to seizures 
and, you know, and, and autism and behaviors and things like that. Um, it actually helps to kind of balance out our, our system so that, uh, you know, it, that's why it helps people to, you know, be less anxious or for children to be uh, more calm by using this mm. as a medicine. May I ask if, if you use CBD or, or marijuana yourself? I, yes, yes, I do. I, okay. I'm actually a, a patient as well. Oh. Um, I primarily use it. I, I use it for anxiety and stress. Um, CBD, I, I primarily use CBD, I have to say, um, because I find that only with, with that, honestly, is, is enough for me personally. I know, I know with other patients who have more severe things going on, you know, they may need something stronger. But for myself, I I use CBD pretty much every day also for sleeping. Um, And also if I, you know, have any pain issues, I'll use it as well. So I I find great relief in myself. And that way, I also feel that I can share my experience with my patients. Yeah. Do you use hemp CBD or do you use CBD that has a little THC in it? I use hemp CBD just because I just happen to carry it in my office yeah. <laughs> and I find it easy um, because we, we have uh, CBD gummies that I, I enjoy as mm-hmm. well, the taste, <laughs> right. but I, I have used CBD from the dispensaries as well. Um, and I've used them before, you know, because uh, uh, it has also even in studies been shown to help with uh, social anxiety and public speaking. And since I do get a little uh, nervous, usually. <laughs> Are you on hemp that. CBD right now? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, today I, I was okay. I was okay, good. good. I, hope, I hope this wasn't. I, I hope this wasn't nerve wracking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit more when I am actually in front of people looking at me. So I get it. But I definitely found that with the CBD from the dispensaries, which has just a little bit more THC in the extraction, I found that to be very noticeable and helpful for me when I had to uh, talk in front of a group of people. So I definitely find it to myself personally to be helpful as well. Well, I always ask this question of our of our guests since the show is called Enhance Your Life. Just how cannabis has enhanced your life? I mean, you sort of just touched on it, but how, how has cannabis enhanced your own life? Well, I have to say that besides my own personal experience with CBD and uh, cannabis, that whenever I see my patients doing so well, and I have to tell you, a lot of them are so thankful and grateful that this medicine has helped them, whether it be um, some of my the parents of my pediatric patients, and um, I have older patients, I have geriatric patients who also have had really severe pain issues or severe insomnia, that they are, it, it really, I, when I see it, it change other people's lives, and they tell me how it's given them their life back, that really makes me feel so happy that yeah. this medicine can uh, have those possibilities. If people want to find out more about you, where where should they go? So, um, so our website is www.medverde.com, M-E-D-V-E-R-D-E.com. Our phone number in Miami is 786-842-7001. And do you have, pay, are your most of your patients in the local area or do you have some remote uh, patients as well? Um, I have some remote patients um, that I treat with uh, CBD. Right. And, or I also have some patients even who are a bit of snowbirds and they are in a Mm -hmm. uh, recreational state. So I help them also with their regimens, even when they're up in like Illinois, for example. And I, you know, I I try and help them with the dosing and the products that are available up there. So I, I also see some remote patients. As my grandma would say, that was the, that was the Florida state bird, the snowbird. Or the right. <laughs> no, she she say the early bird. <laughs> but um, Dr. Wong, thank you so much for for speaking to us. It's been so informative, and thank you for all the great work you do. Thank, thanks for having me. Enhance Your Life is brought to you by Wana, the number one infused product in North America. Wana's entire process is designed to deliver the same great experience time after time. They have spent years fine-tuning their recipes so that their products are delicious, consistent, and potent. For more information, head on over to wannabrands.com. That's wanna, W-A-N-A, brands.com.